Live, live at the Olympia yeah. with Ali Murs, Aslan, Pressy, Roy Seven, the original Root Boys, Halo, and Cars Love Girls. FM 104's The Gig. So we have Brezzy just fresh off the stage from doing his sound check. How are you? I'm good and sweaty. Are you? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> You're it's fine. It's not a good look on TV. <laughs> it's all right. I'm sure it's still a good look. It's You're fine. Right. No, are you okay? Good. So come here. Are you looking forward to later? I am. Yeah. I'm doing it. Yeah, it's just three, t three years in a row. I think any band that gets to play the event, it's kind of, it, it's, it's, a, it's amazing. But to do it for actually a good cause is a bonus. And I think everybody involved, I think bands around Ireland now are actually it's one of the gigs they want to play and they kind of yeah. put themselves forward for I'm sure you got loads of yeah. applicants, so I'm kind of privileged to be doing it. Do you know this afternoon I even got a phone call looking to put an act on the bill? You never know, somebody you don't? could pull out, like, yeah. that, that could be it. Like, so if we'd, like, I think the first year we did it, like, I, I think Deck, our drummer, got food poisoning and it was touch and go for it, literally, excuse the pun, but um, to do the gig and it was like, yeah. we were like, what if you have to pull this? Yeah. It was like he couldn't stand up. <laughs> So wow. the, the absolute quality of my Did you make him crawl in? No, he did all right. We just put him full of every drug we knew that was legal. Good. Yeah. Fair play. I think it is a case, though, when it is for charity, it's, and because there's a lot of bands that do it, it's a chance to meet up with other bands, and it, you know it's for a good cause, so you have a bit of crack as well while you're doing it. Is that a case uh, for you? It's just, you know, when you do gigs like this, uh, everything's taken care of. There's no stress. So you get on mm. stage, you perform, and um, you've gone already made completely up for the crowd. Yeah. Which, to be honest with you, at the moment, especially the way the kind of scene is at the moment, you don't get that very often mm. anymore, not even at the major festivals. So any chance you get to play in front of a couple of thousand people is, you got to take it and you gotta, you got to give it socks as well. Because you probably feed from crowds. Oh, it's, yeah. it's for, like, I mean, I actually don't mind if, if there's like, smaller crowds. I, you know, I think if you're a professional and you've been doing it a while, you have to approach it the same way. And if someone, regardless if someone spends 30 quid on a ticket, mm. you can't go up there and go through the motions. Yeah, it's true. So Colourblind Stereo, uh -huh. album out. Yes. I've How is it going for you? It's going good. It's yeah. kind of, it's, it was kind of obviously a totally different approach to the Blizzard stuff. Mm. And, um, but like that, the whole side of it was with the Blizzards was like, we, we've all we've always had intentions of doing another album. Yeah. So I didn't see the point in doing a kind of um, like, um, uh, oh shit, that's my arse pocket. Sorry. <laughs> You're fine. Vibrate away. Right. Yeah. You can your, take the call if you manager. want. Your, oh, oh. Do you not know I've done an interview? You've been my tour manager. You just ruined a really good question. <laughs> I can ask it again. Say sorry to the say sorry loud to the mic. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Bye. Sorry. You sorry. just can't get the staff nowadays. Oh, he's getting like mm. when I see him. You want to start that out? Yeah, he's done. All right. He's fired. So come on, you don't you didn't want to do the same video as, or the same type of album no. as you did for the Blizzards? Like, I've never ever like, like when a for, uh, for album first came out, people were like, it's really poppy. I says, I've never shied away from that. And yeah. I've never shied away from my influences, which were heavily based in the eighties. And mm. um, the other thing about it was, I wanted to do an album that tested my production. And to do another guitar album, I don't find that very testing in terms of production. It's, yeah. I've done it a few times now. I've done it a few acts. And I was, I was a little tired of it, so I kind of wanted to do something a different approach. And then, but like at the end of the day, I'll always try to write big choruses and songs that people want to enjoy. Mm. I'm just, you know, I'll never fall into that shoe gazing category of my dog died, my mum, you know, my my wife left me kind of stuff. It just doesn't suit me. No. I kind of maybe it will some sooner or later, but it at might the end moment, the line. At the moment, I'm quite happy. Okay. I, I don't think I'm going to sing it. Your dog's song. okay. No, he's dead. <laughs> Okay. You, don't need, you don't need to know about that. No. Have you ever thought about getting a dance remix for any of the songs that you've released? I think one of your guys is doing a dance remix of Good Intentions I did hear at the a little bit of a rumour. Um, and apparently it's going very well. Yeah. I, with, with dance remixes, the, my co-producer on the album, J808 Jimbo, is mm. like remix both of them and uh, he, like, he's like almost, he never mixes commercially because he's so, he's, he's just so talented. Okay. He can do all kinds of, yeah. kinds of crazy things. So he, he wanted to do something different, which he did. Uh, yeah, but like, I think Al's going with something, you know, he's yeah. a very good commercial dance here that I'd love to see what he could do with Good Yeah, I know Al Gibbs is brilliant at yeah, that type of thing. But it's yeah. actually Good Intentions is a dance track anyway. Yeah. But I think it has the potential to fill floors if you do it right. Yeah. And it's, it's a very positive song. Because I know DJs in clubs who do actually get asked for it as is. Mm. So like if you change that into a dance no, remix, then it's definitely... It and we could have made it dan more dancey, but like, you know, at the stage, people also said, you know, you're quite heavily dance influenced in, in this album. Mm. And I was like, the dance influences, like, 
you know, they're, they've always been there with, say, the Blizzard stuff. Whether mm. it was guitar music or not, it was always songs that made people want to move. Mm. So I think g genres have just disappeared now with the pop music. And it's, yeah. it's either pop music or it's not. Yeah. So, um, you, you know, you, you can't have your cake and eat it. True. I never knew, I never, never knew under, understood what that phrase meant until the other day. <laughs> I used it three times today. So that's your saying yeah, there. We're going to hear you I saying that everywhere. I actually my cake, cake and egg today as well. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. I put it in a practical term. <laughs> Come here to me. Out of the other bands that are on stage tonight, who do you want to see? There's a few bands I haven't seen. Okay. I've heard about. Uh, I haven't seen, um, I haven't seen um, the original Root Boys. I've mm. heard a lot about them. Good. We're touring with Cars Love Girls at the moment, who I adore, and I think yeah, Perez is one of the best guitar players in the country. I love watching them play, it makes me feel sick. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's, I, I kind of want to see Ollie Muir as well, you know. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I've, I have a little bit of affection for all Ollie. Do you? Because, yeah, you I, live with a man crush on him? No, I wouldn't say man crush, I'd say more kind of. A little bit of adamant respect for him. Okay. And so I have a girl crush. It's okay if you have a man well, crush on him. Really? You're, you're I'm heterosexual. <laughs> I kind of, you know, I can see where the girls are going there. He's a bit small though. Um, yeah. But you know, I, I think everyone. I think Y7 are incredible. I've played, I've played with them a few times. I know Paul. They're good. And yeah. I've grown up, I suppose, in the industry of Paul, and I've seen how hard they've worked. So, you know, this every time you played this bill, it's always been interesting. It's always mm. been eclectic. And I think everyone has something to bring and something to offer on stage tonight, which is which is what, what a good lineup should be. Okay, finally, tomorrow night, you have a big night. Yeah. Tell yeah. us. Um, I'm going to Nando's tomorrow night. <laughs> on your own? But my parents know. No, oh, your parents? Oh, I told them I'd treat them. I don't, I've, <laughs> so you're bringing them to Nando's? I'm lucky enough to have a, a, a high five card. They I was just going to say, don't tell me you're bringing them for they, free. They, they don't know about <laughs> So, so you're going to pretend that you're bringing them and paying for them, but you're going to slyly put the high five card about in. It. I'm going to tell them all about it once they eat the food and they're happy. I mean, my parents are no, are no snobs. They don't care. They just, my dad likes chicken, he likes chips. Fair enough. Like, you know, so I'm going to bring them there. But then uh, I have to bring them to the gig that I'm doing as well. Right. In the academy, which is the last gig the of the tour. Um, and then I'm back to London. So you're gone uh, from Irish soil? I'm back a week later to start filming The Voice. Oh yes! And so, um, I have to get my TV boots on for that. Mm. Um, I'm quite, too, what, quite sure to, what to expect for it, but I have to go home for a week and cool. you know, slap, slap the Brits. Are you looking forward to it? Do you think you're going to be somebody who's like a Simon Cowell type thing or Gary well, Barlow? Like I'll be in this show. It's not. It's not about that. It's not about humiliation. It's not about a self-righteous judgment on people, and that's why I don't like the X Factor. But it's purely about like it. the voice, obviously. Yeah, self but it's not. You don't go up there if you don't like a person's voice. You're not going to go. You have a bad voice. There's, there's 10,000 okay. applicants, 150 have got through. Everybody wow. who's going to be on that stage has a great voice. Whether it's a voice I want to work with and mentor yeah. is a different thing. And I think I'm looking for something completely different than I know, say, Brian Kennedy's looking for. That he's looking for yeah. a world class voice. Yeah. I'm looking for an original, yeah. quirky performer and a singer. Like, and the thing is, people have to understand we can't see them, but if you produce records before and you have a good ear, you, you'll know what it's mm. like, you'll know the confidence levels, you'll know all about that, you don't have to see people. I think it's good that the four judges are very different. Mm. Very different. I mean, we appeal to, I suppose, all the... Every type of genre. Yeah, yeah, target audience. But I think that's what they did it for. But I think, like, you know, you've got Keen, who's so, like, obviously, I keep, I keep saying Keen Healy, which is hilarious. Imagine Keen Healy, <laughs> no! Um, uh, Keen Egan. Uh, imagine Keen Healy in Westlake. And then That's even Egan funnier and, than and on the voice. For Ireland. <laughs> right, right? Um, so yeah, no, it's kind of like it's keen. Obviously, you know, it's his experience. I mean, mm. I think I'm not. I'm not there for only the only reason I think I'm there is because of my studio experience, and yeah. production experience, and, which is still limited, like to where I wanted to go. But I think I can bring a lot to vocalists. Yeah. You know, and I really, I'm very passionate about singing, and I'm very passionate about other uh, vocalists. So. I, you know, I've kind of written off my entire next few months to put everything okay. into this. Okay. Okay. Oh. Why you look? Thanks for coming no, in and chatting to us. Anytime. Making us laugh and stuff. And stuff. Did you pick it? Like, Ready? The mic in a weird position. It's just like, I don't know. Why are you picking it up? Okay. I think so. That's him. Being He'll be on stage you, later. My left arm is too tired. He won't let me. Closer to my kind of. I move my head closer to that. Well. I wrap up. up this up. is this yeah. is when you edit. It's called editing. This won't make it. If it does, no. you're going to take it to slap. But I'm actually putting this there. Thank you, Yeah. See you later. Bye. See ya.